One of the most important things I think for all sheep farmers, the thing that really drives your productivity for the next year is how many lambs survive. And lambing time is the crucial time for, um, for really setting up what's, what's going to happen for the rest of the year. So we know that lambs are most vulnerable, they're most at risk on the day that they're born. Actually their mothers are as well when they give birth. So it's a really important time. Um, they're more likely to die on that day than any other day in the year. Um, so it's really important to get that right. Um, and so lamb survival is uh, something that everybody worries about. I think all our, our farmers, our sheep farmers, are really concerned about how do we keep lambs alive. And some of the work that we've done has shown that it is um, that maternal relationship, the bond that the ewe forms with her lamb, but crucially what the lamb does as well, that really determines whether the lamb is going to survive or not. So we've shown that the lamb needs to get up, it needs to find the udder, and it needs to suckle. And a lot of those behaviours, although the mother can support the lamb, she needs to be cooperative to help the lamb get to the udder. It's no good if she walks off, for example. But the lamb still has to be able to stand up and find the udder. Um, and no matter what the ewe does, if the lamb doesn't have that vigour, that vitality, that ability to get to its feet and get to the udder, then it's not going to survive. When the lamb sucks and when it gets colostrum, that's, it's, it has lots of important roles. But it also plays a role in developing a relationship with the mother. So when the mother gives birth, she has a set of, sort of changes in her hormones, changes in, her, um, in her, her nervous system that makes her want to take care of the lamb. And the lamb sucking from her and her licking and grooming is what builds that bond. So she learns to recognise her own lamb by licking it. And that smell and taste of the lamb is what makes her recognise her own lamb. And then what keeps that relationship is the lamb suckling from the mother. And there's a really important hormone called oxytocin that the ewe produces when she gives birth. And then every time the lamb sucks, every time they're in contact with each other, that causes more of this amazing hormone to be produced into the ewe's bloodstream. And it's that oxytocin that makes her want to carry on being a mother. So if the lamb dies, the ewe quite quickly stops wanting to be with the lamb because she's not getting that reinforcement, that relationship with her lamb. So that sucking behaviour by the lamb keeps the ewe wanting to look after that lamb and that relationship. And it also helps the lamb, obviously with nutrition, but it also helps the lamb learn to recognise its own mother as well. So it learns to follow its mother by having that sucking relationship. When we talk about recording at lambing time, you think, I've already got so many things to do. So I think for me, at lambing time, what I would be really thinking about recording would be lambing ease. Did I assist the ewe or not? Was the lamb presented properly or not? And how much did I have to intervene? So every now and again, we might just have to do a little position change for a lamb. Um, or maybe we, we assist a lamb, but it comes out very easily. And then we have some of the really difficult lambing that maybe takes a long time. It's, um, it's really hard to deliver those lambs. So we could just say we assisted or we didn't, but we could also think about the amount of assistance we needed. If you can and you see your ewes lambing, to look at those lambs after five minutes and record whether they're standing up or not. Um, and again, there can be complicated systems, but what you might want to know is just, did it stand up? Was it trying to stand up? or has it made no attempt to stand up at five minutes? And then I would record whether that you or lamb needed help. So did you have to assist them to suckle? And again, you might think about how long did I have to help the you and lamb for? Was it just once and then the lamb got going? And maybe we would think, well, oh, perhaps those lambs are all right. There may have been something else going on. It was a cold, wet day. Something else might have affected that lamb. But if you're still having to assist them after 24 hours, I would be really thinking seriously about whether this is the genetics you want in your flock for the future. So there's lots of different ways that you can record this. I think I would probably recommend finding a system that actually fits into what you already do. So if you record in a notebook, record it in a notebook, but then maybe go through and actually read that notebook and extract the data from that later. If you use farm recording software, and there's lots of different options out there now, if you can record it against an ear tag number for the U, that's going to make your life a lot easier for the future. Um, particularly if you're trying to match that with who was the ram um, of the lamb. So those using um, all the tools that we have out there at the moment. So once you've collected all these data together, you need to have a look at it. That's how we uh, interpret the data and make some decisions. So 
thinking of the suitable time to do that, I would really be focusing on the point where I'm weaning the lambs, because I'm going through all my lambs, that's the point where I'm probably going to know how many lambs I've got on the ground. If you've been scanning, so you, if you scanned the ewe for how many lambs you were expecting to have, which is a really important thing to be doing because you can manage your nutrition and you know what to expect. And then compare what you got with what you were expecting. And that's the time that you can start to build in some of these other bits of recording that you did as well. Yeah, I would really think about whether you are recording how many lambs have died. I think we often think we'll remember and in the rush of lambing we often don't remember how many have died or we've just got a, a kind of a head count which is fine but I think if we can link who died with the you that it came from um, it gives us much more information it's much more valuable to start thinking about how can we make improvements for the future and I think if, if it's possible to, to provide some thought or so knowing when they died so did they die on the day of birth or did they die three days later or did they die two weeks later can help to understand when we need to focus effort to try and improve survival. Um, some of these things are out of our control but often it gives us some guidance to think about how we're going to change our, our management or, or think about improving our management. Mm -hmm.